Hello everyone. My name is Susan Kudalakis and I'm Senior Marketing Manager here at Progress. Welcome to our five advantages of Data Direct for Salesforce Data Connectivity webinar. But let me jump in by quickly introducing you to today's speakers, Todd Wright and Aaron Burke. Todd Wright leads global product marketing for Progress Data Direct Solutions. He works closely with the product management and sales organizations to create and promote materials that are relevant and valuable to Progress customers. He is instrumental in developing customer relationships and creating strategic marketing plans that drive awareness, consideration, education, and demand for progress. Aaron Berg has been a principal solutions engineer with Progress for over five years. He has worked in the IT space for over 25 years, working in network administration and data connectivity. His primary focus today is on bridging the gap between data and analytics by using open standards such as ODBC, JDBC, and OData and REST. This broad experience has allowed him to be a valuable resource for customers looking to implement Progress Data Direct's connectivity solutions. I'm really excited to have both Todd and Aaron with us today, and now I'll turn it over to them to start the presentation. Thanks, Susan, and hello to everyone on the webcast today. To kick things off, let's start with why we are here today. And that's because uh, many of us, including us here at Progress, use Salesforce as our CRM system of choice and are really looking to take uh, full advantage of our investment to include not only accessing data from Salesforce, but also pulling data into Salesforce to gain a better understanding of our customers. For many Salesforce customers, when it comes to that need for connectivity, both pulling data in and out of Salesforce, thankfully they have uh, turned to Data Direct. And you might be asking, who is Data Direct exactly? I'm fully aware that uh, Progress Data Direct isn't a household name like Salesforce. So let me give you a quick intro. First, as it stands to reason, as a data connectivity company, we help organizations connect to the data they need to run their business. And when it comes to Salesforce in particular, this really comes in two main areas. First, Data Direct enables analytics and reporting against your Salesforce data using your own BI tools instead of Salesforce built in reporting. And this is really possible because many popular BI tools embed our Salesforce driver to connect to Salesforce. And even the ones that don't, our drivers plug into most all BI tools for a really secure and reliable connectivity to Salesforce data. And really both of these result in no need for you as a Salesforce customer to export Salesforce data to a data warehouse, meaning you can with Data Direct report against live Salesforce data for real time information. And moving on a little bit about Data Direct and what we really do for Salesforce, Data Direct also enables you to view external data from within your Salesforce application or Salesforce reports. And this is uh, really done by the fact that Data Direct Salesforce Connect feature uses OData to connect to external data. And Data Direct for Salesforce can expose any external data source as OData. And this allows you to view external data from Salesforce, as I mentioned before, without paying to relocate and store that data in Salesforce, and really resulting in big savings for your organization and many others. So now that we got the who is data direct out of the way, let's talk a little bit about why we are here today. And that is, in fact, our customers telling us here at Progress Data Direct, telling us why they have partnered with us for their Salesforce investment. And this can be narrowed down to uh, the top five. Everyone loves lists, so I'll, I'll do a top five list. Uh, number one is performance. And I'll be going over all of these in a little bit more detail. Number two, high availability and fault tolerance. Number three, security. Number four, read and write support. And finally, detailed logging and auditing. So to jump right in again, let's talk about performance. It's well known that the sooner data can be accessed and used for your BI and analytics projects, the better the insights they will provide to everyone within your organization. Really, Data Direct understands this, and this is why our connectivity drivers are considered one of the more performant connectivity tools on the market. And this is really accomplished in three ways. First, to improve response times and minimize the impact to the backend data source, our drivers only return the data that is required. 
as it's being consumed by throttling controls. Second, the use of query timeouts that can be set to restrict long running queries. And third, and finally, Data Direct leverages best in class JDBC drivers to reduce CPU and memory consumption. And moving on to high availability and fault tolerance, I'll give you another reason list here. Data Direct supports your organization and other organizations using Salesforce by really the support for cluster installations in which multiple computer systems work together as a single unit, often to achieve high availability, increased performance, and or improved uh, scalability. The second one is scaling horizontally, also known as scale out. This entails adding more nodes to a system to increase its capacity and handle increased loads. And finally, for high availability and fault tolerance, is the ability to support industry standard load balancing to ensure that all network traffic is distributed evenly across multiple servers, and really thus by improving the overall performance and availability of the system. And moving on, where would we uh, be without a presentation that mentions uh, security within the software environment? Between customer demands and data protection laws, obviously it's top of mind with all our customers here at Data Direct. So what exactly does Data Direct provide with its drivers? First, OAuth2 support, which I think many of us know is a, is a secure authorization framework for accessing REST APIs, which in turn allows developers to securely integrate third-party applications with Salesforce. Next is OpenID Connect support, thus allowing for a robust and secure authentication and authorization infrastructure, both for internal and external users. And end-to-end -end encryption for data in transit and at rest, which is very important. And finally, of course, we're a multi-tenant solution with granular user access controls, which really gives organizations the ability to manage and allocate resources while ensuring data privacy and security for each tenant. So read and write support. This really includes uh, when we talk about uh, Data Direct and Salesforce is a bi-directional data transfer, which enables a seamless exchange of data between Salesforce and other systems. and really is uh, facilitating a real-time data integration and streamlined business process for your organization as well as maintaining a single source of the truth, ensuring that data is consistent, accurate, and up-to-date across the platform, which is obviously key for AI and business platforms and programs that you have at your organization. And to wrap up before Aaron jumps into our demo, there is the final strength that I wanted to talk about, and that's regarding detailed logging and auditing. And this really includes two areas in particular. First, the ability to perform a full SQL audit on a per user basis to track and monitor all activities and changes made by individual users. And second, is really the insights that you can develop into data usage and user activity, which in turn can provide valuable information for optimizing performance, enhancing security by monitoring access patterns and identifying potential security risks. I know I went over a lot here uh, within my presentation. At this time, uh, we're gonna pass it over to Aaron for that demo. He's gonna show a lot of what I spoke about. And uh, Aaron, without any further ado, let's pass it over to you and show what uh, we can do for Salesforce investments. All right, well, thank you, Todd. For the demo part of this, I wanna go through how we can help expose those on-prem external data sources to Salesforce using the Salesforce Connect feature. Now, what Salesforce Connect does is it allows you to take those sources and view them where they live. So you don't actually have to copy those data sources into Salesforce. You actually are accessing them as the single source of truth. And it does this through what I like kind of call the magic of OData. OData being a REST API, I like to call it SQL over REST. Microsoft started this about 15 years ago. And you'll see it in a lot of BI tools. It's become a very common way to connect the data over the REST um, protocol. It makes it really easy to integrate when you're talking with Salesforce. Now, the nice thing in Salesforce is you can 
create these external objects. So normally you'll have standard objects out of the box, custom objects that you can build in Salesforce. Those also being objects that are using data that's stored in Salesforce. Now when you come to these external objects, they're actually just storing the metadata or of the remote data sources. So here on the right, you'll see like the orders, invoices, benefits, those are all reaching out to data sources that might be hosted in the cloud or on-prem. So for the demo here, I'm gonna do a real quick architecture overview of the environment that I'm using. And then I will also um, then show how we're gonna connect to an on-prem SQL server. Um, we're gonna OData enable that. And then we're gonna to connect to that endpoint from Salesforce. Um, and then inside of Salesforce, I'm gonna show you how we can view and update that because this is a full CRUD solution. And then we'll go back over to Todd and um, pick it up for questions. So from an architecture point of view, what I'm doing here is we have our hybrid data pipeline servers running in AWS. And those are able to connect out to data sources, whether direct, either directly or in the cloud or even remote. And it does that using this on-premises connector. And this is a small Windows agent that runs where it has network access to the data, uses outbound SSL to connect back to the hybrid data pipeline, and um, gives you that secure access without having to set up a VPN or SSH tunnel. Um, and then finally, we're going to come over here and consume that data in Salesforce using the OData REST API. So to start, over here on um, where I have my SQL Server, you'll see I have SQL Server running here, and then I've installed that hybrid data pipeline on-premises connector, just that simple Windows agent, um, and it's reaching out to the hybrid data pipeline server. You can do a test connect on that, validate its connectivity, so it makes it very easy to do that integration. When we go to the hybrid data pipeline server now, and we're gonna log into that, All right, we're going to create a new data source in the hybrid data pipeline. We'll be connecting to a SQL server, the one that we installed the on-premises connector to access. We're going to name our data source, put in the credentials to access it, as well as the name of the database. We're going to put in the connector ID and then click test connect. Once we have successfully connected, we can now go to the OData tab, and here we'll use OData version four to set up the schema mapping to associate the on-prem data source or as an OData endpoint. We're gonna choose our albums. We'll add that to our map. We'll uh, choose the artist table as well and add that to the map. And then we're gonna click save map and save one more time. And you'll see here that it's gonna build out that schema mapping. Once that's completed, we're gonna end up with the OData endpoint, which you see here. So we're gonna take that OData endpoint, and now we're gonna go over to Salesforce, where we're gonna connect to that data source. So we're gonna go into setup inside of Salesforce. We'll choose our external data. External data sources. We'll click new external data source, and here we're going to name it. We're gonna choose OData v4. We will put in the URL that we just created through the hybrid data pipeline. We're gonna make this a writable object, and then we'll change our authentication and set our credentials. Then we will click save. Once that's done, we'll click Validate and Sync. We'll choose the two tables, and this was what maps those to the external objects inside of Salesforce. You'll see that those have been mapped. And once that's done, we can now create a tab. I find this a good way to view these. So if we go to Tabs, and we'll create a new custom object tab. We're gonna choose our object here. In this case, we're gonna choose artists. We're gonna choose our tab style. And we'll click next. And then next. And then save. 
once the tab has been created, we can now go back to one of the sort of apps in Salesforce and view that tab. You'll see the artist tab here on the top. I'm going to change our view to all. And then we're going to also modify the fields that we can see. So I'm going to add the artist ID and the name field. And then we're going to move those up a little bit. And we'll move the artist ID up as well. We'll click save. And now you'll see this live data coming back from that on-premise database. Now, one cool thing we can do, and you'll actually see the URL here pointing to it, is we can actually create a new record here to show that we have full write capabilities. And to use my uh, stage name here, we'll save that. Now we've created Artist 300. If we go back to our SQL Server and run a query, you'll see that we've already have written that back. All right. So as you can see, it's really a quick way to expose that on-prem data source to Salesforce, be able to use it inside of Salesforce, um, and save you a lot of time and cost in terms of having to move data into Salesforce. So with that, I think I'll hand it back over to Todd for questions. I think I'm going to jump in for Todd. Um, we got a couple of questions that came in while um, the presentation was going on, so let's jump on in. Um, the first question I have um, is, how long does it take to get hybrid data pipeline set up and configured? Aaron, that might be a good one for you. I, I, I remember you showing me uh, one time the, the process that you went through, and it, it seemed pretty straightforward, um, but of, of course, that's with a caveat. You work for Progress Data Direct. Um, how long do you think it would take uh, a customer or a prospect uh, looking at hybrid data pipeline? Yeah, usually I I say, you know, once you have, you know, the environments um, that you're going to install in, whether it be a Docker environment, which we support, or if you're going to be putting it onto a Linux VM, either in the cloud or on-prem, um, you know, we probably spend a day working on it, um, depending on the complexity. If you're going to do a multi-node installation, it might take a little bit longer um, because you'll be configuring a load balancer and a back-end database. Um, but this is definitely not a uh, an extensive uh, installation process. Um, you know. Just a, a basic trial installation can often be done, you know, in an, in an hour or two if you're going to terminate your traffic right on the hybrid data pipeline server. So can be can be pretty quick to get going with the trial, and then you're uh, into like maybe a day or a couple days of work um, to get a production environment going. So no one's looking at a army of consultants spending a, a month at their organization. <laughs> yeah, no. When we have. Um, <laughs> We we definitely have a fair number of tutorials and um, and documentation and videos to help with that. And then also, of course, you have have our, our pre pre sales team here that's always yep. always eager to assist. Yep. So I have another question for you: Is is there a business case to better understand this integration? Sure, I can I can take that. Um, you know we. We often see people who have on-prem solutions that have a large amount of data. Maybe it's like a, an ERP or you know some sort of legacy system that might have millions or even billions at times rows of data that they want to make available in Salesforce for like say their customer service team to be able to look up historical information. Um, and we've seen this a number of times. And and the prospect of migrating all of that data into Salesforce is cost prohibitive and um, pretty time consuming. So to be able to access it where it lives is a pretty common business case um, to, to be able to um, solve that problem. Okay, what happens if I want to connect to a source not listed in the product? So for um, sources out that might not be in our list of data sources that we, we include, um, you have a couple options. You can bring your own JDBC driver. So we support third-party um, JDBC drivers that can be dropped in both to the server for directly connecting from the hybrid data pipeline servers or through the on-premises connector. And then we also um, have a product called our autonomous REST connector, which is actually built right into hybrid data pipeline. And that lets you connect to data sources that are behind REST APIs. So um, we actually have about 
50 or so different like models or something's called recipes to help you connect to sources like Jira or other um, other REST based sources and make it real easy to get SQL access to those and then even could OData enable them if you desire. And then if you have um, like internal custom APIs or maybe um, even public APIs that um, we don't necessarily have a model for, we have a, a user interface that allows you to work with through building a configuration to those um, APIs without without needing to write any code. So it's the autonomous REST connector is a very powerful way to expand the capabilities. So there's another question is, with the DataDirect model, you pro um, how do you propose to solve interoperability with any data? I don't know if you just answered that or not. Yeah, interoperability. I'm not sure I'm completely following. Um, I mean, the, the idea here is that we're giving you access to to the data where it lives, um, and then you can, you know, have that ability to report on it within, you know, your Salesforce environment for this demo. So, um, you know, you could even do reporting that's pulling data from Salesforce and maybe your external data sources. Okay, um, there are a couple more questions that came in. So, is there a way to aggregate the on-premise data with Salesforce data and run a consolidated BI? So within within Salesforce, it, it would be within the limit, you know, whatever the limits of the Salesforce reporting capabilities are. Um, in our product, we true treat the data sources as independent sources. Um, so it's not doing data virtualization um, in that in that sense. Um, we do have a feature that lets you kind of save in terms of your your costs um, for in Salesforce by um, putting a number of different sources behind a single OData endpoint. And that, that can be useful from a cost savings perspective, but we do still treat them as individual sources. Okay. Um, can this be installed in a Docker environment? It can. We um, can support um, a range of Docker environments. You can actually do set it up as a high availability cluster in Docker or single node environment. We have, um, a fair bit of documentation on that as well. Okay, so someone um, sent a question in about costs, so we'll follow up with uh, that person um, after the webinar, so I just wanted to uh, to, to mention that. Um, there's another question about data masking. Is there data masking transformation capabilities for on-premise data? Not in hybrid data pipeline, so we are really focused on the connectivity piece and not the ETL piece with this tool. Um, I'm just well, what looking. about the masking the masking portion, Aaron? Is that still Yeah, today um, yeah. yeah, today there there is no we, we really don't get into the into modifying or affecting the data that's moving through hybrid data pipeline. You can control in your O data mapping, um, you know, you can be more granular in terms of which um, tables and columns you have you expose, but within the actual data, there's no, you know, we're, we're keeping everything intact as it goes through. Yeah. Okay, so we have a couple more questions if you guys have time for to stick around today. So the one question is, is what kind of user training is provided or needed? Sure, I so, say, oh, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. Okay. I, I would say um, the user training really starts off with people like Aaron um, that you'll be dealing with uh, from the very beginning, uh, one of our pre-sales engineers. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, tutorials on our website to uh, help out new customers, as well as some uh, good enablement videos. And of course, we have a community page uh, that can answer a lot of questions from some what we call our power users. Um, Aaron, I, I know you have a lot more uh, field experience than I do regarding all this. Have you seen a lot of uh, intensive training needed or? No, no I, I mean, I, I think generally through the pre-sales process um, and getting a POC running, that, that usually gets people going pretty quickly. Um, there's really no, no need for like, you know, ex extra training or third party training beyond that. Okay, so what version of Salesforce do you need? Is the API for Salesforce required? So we support the latest, the latest releases from Salesforce, and we're 
for hybrid data pipe or for the external data capabilities that's a that's something they've supported for a number of years i as, as long as i've been with progress and I, I think beyond that for the salesforce connect feature so um definitely uh there's no special requirement there on the you do need to license that option from salesforce salesforce connect is not always included in your in your initial salesforce subscription so you have to check with salesforce on that um, in terms of consuming data using the drivers um, we do that Todd also mentioned, we didn't necessarily demo, but we do have a standalone um, ODBC and JDB sales ODBC and JDBC Salesforce drivers that can give you SQL access, and then you can use in the BI tools of your choosing, and those will support. Um, you know, we we have a, like a zero day or a. Uh, Day one, I'm sorry, zero day would be a bad choice of term, but a day a day one um, support policy for um, any changes that Salesforce makes. So um, yeah, we we are always going to support their latest APIs and, um, and with our drivers. Okay, I see one more question. So I'm just going to put in the last call for questions um, and see if anyone else attending has an additional question. But I have one more question for you. Um, can hybrid data pipeline only be used for Salesforce? Nope. So you can use hybrid data pipeline to um, for any 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 tool that consumes O data. So you um, we have you know customers that will point um, Tableau or Power BI or even Excel to the O data endpoints. And then you also do have access to um, ODBC and JDBC drivers that can connect the hybrid data pipeline and take advantage of its ability to act as a data hub. So using a single driver, you can connect to um, any of the data sources that you um, configured inside of hybrid data pipeline. So it, it's a little bit of a Swiss Army knife, does lots of different things. Um, if you have specific use cases, please let us know. Um, we can definitely follow up. Actually, there is one more question. Mm -hmm. um, how does this, and this might be very specific for the person who asked it for QAD, but how does this work if we have multiple QAD databases? Does it consolidate the data from all and send to Salesforce? So it would you would connect to um, with QAD. Um, you would probably connect to each of the if you had individual databases behind the scenes. Um, you'd be connecting to those directly, and then um, have them ex exposed as in more or less individual data sources inside of Salesforce. Um, it'd probably be how I would see that working. We probably have to look at your use case a little bit more. If we were connecting through any sort of REST endpoints that were exposed, that may be a different, you know, it might be a different answer. But we can definitely dig into that more. Okay. Um, that actually was the last question. Um, I don't see any others that have come in. So with that, um, I'd like to close today's webinar and thank you all for joining. Um, there are a few people that asked for um, some additional information and we will follow up with you um, after, this, after the webinar. So thank you all for joining us today. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.